Why, hello and welcome. I received a new package today, direct from PCBNG. PCBNG is a low cost PCB fabrication and assembly service. And I decided to give them a try at my mini monkey design. A few months ago, um, I built a design around the LPC 55 S69 in a VFBGA 98 package. This is an interesting package because it's a 0.5 millimeter pitch BGA, but NXP gives some application notes, has some application notes that show how to route this design effectively on two layers. And you can fan out quite a bit of this design on two layers with pretty simple and relaxed design rules. So I went to go test that assumption. In Rev A, I had some boards built with a different service, Macrofab, and posted a video on nxp.com. But I had some design changes I wanted to do on the Mini Monkey. So I'd figure I'd give a different service a try. I ran across PCBNG, and it potentially looked to be a little bit lower cost for the same design, so I figured I wanted to give them a try. Same assumptions, I wanted to do everything on two layers and see if they could get this tight pitch to device down um, without any monkeying around. So what I received was actually really good. So I got six of these, and out of the box, they looked really good. PCBNG actually sent me some pictures of an x-ray inspection of the BGA part as well as this land grid array part. This is a bottom port I squared S digital microphone. So those x-rays look great, uh, showed no solder bridging of any kind, and it was good show. So there's the bottom side. So pretty happy. One of the things uh, I did with this design is I incorporated some of these low-cost IPS displays that I found from buydisplay.com. I like these displays because they're only a few dollars, but they're super high resolution for this size. There's like 240 by 240 pixels. They're controlled over a spy connection on this flex cable, and this is designed to be hot bar soldered, but it's something you can do just like with a regular soldering iron. You kind of do that and you fold it over. I didn't have PCNB try these. I'm sure they could do it, but I didn't want to take the time to document it. I just wanted to see with the surface mount and pick and place items how it turned out, and it turned out great. So all in all, I was pretty happy. Um, this design, I decided to make a couple changes that required some fairly serious routing changes, one of which this USB interface here was routed the USB zero of the LPC 5569 on Rev A. I moved to uh, USB one. It just turned out that USB one had the ROM bootloader that's kind of built into the chip wired up and configured just to run out of the box. You can do it with USB zero, but you have to set some flash configuration bits and you have the potential for bricking the part if you don't do it right. So I wanted to move that, make it a little easier to use. I moved the button, some buttons around and added this little switch for my lithium polymer battery just so I could disconnect it. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with what, what I got. And let's take a look at the circuit actually working. So here we are. I have my display attached. And notice that flex kind of folds underneath and I had it soldered. I'm using some 3M two-sided uh, VHB tape to hold the display down. Works out pretty good. I attached my battery with that same adhesive and just ran direct leads down. I didn't use the standard JST connector that comes in these lithium polymers. I Just for the sake of shortening the wires, I just ran them direct. And let me turn on my little switch. Ta-da! We have monkeys! There we go. So... My firmware that I got working, just to kind of test the out-of-the-box configuration, just reads this bottom port MEMS microphone, kind of buffers, uh, gathers a little buffer of data, and dumps it to the screen. 
The screen, the refresh rate, you can actually get pretty fast depending on what you're doing. The spy rate to the display somewhat limits your frame rate unless you're willing to like overclock it. But I may be getting 25, um, 20 to 25 frames per second. Uh, so you can get some neat little animations uh, and get some cool little graphics applications out of this processor. That's one of the reasons I wanted to use it. Um, and let me turn this one on here. All right, we got two little mini monkeys going. So like I said, PCBNG, um, in addition to the VFBGA package, also did the hard work of putting on this bottom port MEMS microphone. It's in a land grid array style package. Pretty difficult. You could solder it yourself, but they're fairly sensitive. You can't really clean them. You got to be careful with how you, you handle the part just because you effectively through that port have exposed silicon. So they did the hard work of putting the device on as well as doing the x-ray inspection. And I've done enough of these MEMS microphones and seen enough of them not work due to mishandling during the soldering process. And the, these turned out great. So kudos to PCBNG. Uh, very happy I'll be using them again. I'll have a little blog post to go through the process with PCBNG just to show the, the process and what I ended up with. But here you can kind of see it live. Um, I'm probably going to do a Rev C. Uh, I I prefer to do lots of little revisions um, in iterations. I find it helpful to not not worry about getting everything perfect on the first time. It's low enough cost to do these designs so you can iterate. I've been debating whether to get rid of this battery circuit. It's not really performing as well as I want with the charger just because the space constraints. I might make like a little sub board, a little auxiliary board to put batteries on if we want as an option that we could I don't know, use it as like a little watch or something like that and leave this room for some, I wanted some spy flash and maybe like an SD card. This chip, the LPC 55 S69 has a ton of cool interfaces. Like I said, two USBs, you know, the SD interface has this entire DSP engine built in for doing fast Fourier transforms, uh, bi quad filters, FR filters. It can do matrix multiplication, um, in a dedicated hardware unit. So there's all kinds of neat stuff in this chip. And I wanted to build a board to kind of, you know, demo those functions and write about it. So thanks for taking the time to check out Rev B of the Mini Monkey built by PCBNG. And I'm sure I'll have plenty more in the future to show you with the Mini Monkey. Have a nice day.